Oh, hey, welcome back to another episode of Then We Eat. This week, we're going to be doing something we haven't done in quite a while. We're going to be doing some curd. Um, if you watched our cheddar cheese video, which uh, we'll put in over here or over here, wherever it goes, um, you, you'll notice that there's a lot of similarity in making curd. There's really not a lot of difference in making different kinds of cheese. Um, there's normally just a difference in the culture or cultures, depending on what kind of cheese you're making. So today, the curd is very simple. There's um, four liters of milk. Uh, it, this is homogenized milk. You can also add a little bit of cream, which will also help. I'm not going to bother today. I've done it without. It works fine. Um, so we're going to use it. We're going to use um, about a eighth of a teaspoon of the culture, some about a quarter teaspoon of calcium chloride, and then we'll use a little bit of rennet, and it will uh, actually form the, the curd. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up the the temperature of the milk to about 90 degrees. Um, do it slowly, you don't want to scald the milk. So we'll just get started on that. It's going to get a little noisy with the burner again. Okay, so we've got it on the lowest temperature. This should take about uh, 10 to 15 minutes um, and then uh, we'll check back in. So it'll give us about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, by the way, one more thing just before I go, uh, just give it a little bit of a stir every now and again. It just helps keep the milk uh, heating up evenly. So let's uh, Let's give it a little stir and then we'll do this every few minutes. See you in a bit. Okay, so the milk's up to uh, 33 degrees Celsius or about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I think I had mentioned earlier that you use homogenized milk. What you actually want is either whole milk, which is kind of hard to find, or find a uh, milk with the highest fat you can find. If you can only get like 2%, then just add a little bit of cream to thicken it up some. So once we have this up to temperature, we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of the culture. I'm sorry, an eighth of a teaspoon of the culture. And we're just gonna sprinkle it on the top and let it sit for just a couple minutes, a couple seconds, just to let it kind of rehydrate a bit. Make sure you get it all. All right, so once it's been in there a couple minutes, what you wanna do is you want to stir it, but the way to do it is to take your slotted spoon, put it at the bottom of the pot, and move it up and down without breaking the surface of the actual milk. And you do want to do this for about 30 seconds or so. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of calcium chloride. Now, if you if you have whole milk, then you don't need the calcium chloride because there's, there's nothing that's been pasteurized. In this case, we're just going to be better safe than sorry and add the calcium chloride. It won't hurt if, if you don't need it. So just quarter teaspoon. And then we're just going to gently stir that again for another 30 seconds or so. Same thing, try not to uh, give it a really heavy duty stir, just kind of let everything kind of get mixed together a bit. Alright, then it, once everything's mixed in, then uh, what we're going to do, we're going to put a lid on the pot. And we're going to uh, put some towels around the pot and just try to keep it at the 90 degrees. If you find it's, uh, if your house is cold or you're making it in the winter, then you may have to heat it up again just a tad, but be careful because you don't want to scald the milk. So in this case, I'm just going to add a couple of towels. It should be fine. It's plenty warm here today, so we'll just do that and we'll see you in about an hour. According to our smart device, who will remain nameless, it's been about an hour. So what we're going to do now, um, while we were off camera, what I did was I took a, uh, a quarter tablet of rennet and I've mixed it with a quarter of a cup of water. Um, you'll notice with the rennet it won't actually all dissolve but just keep mixing it. Um, I did this about 10 minutes ago. You, um, you don't want to go any longer than a half an hour it starts to lose its potency. So the next step we'll uh, get the rennet in the pot. So you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see this or not, but you can kind of see a cloudy kind of, that's about the best it's going to mix. So we'll put this in. And make sure once again that you get all of it out of the container. 
So you're going to do the same thing as before. What you're going to do is put the uh, spoon in the pot at the bottom, bring it up, don't break the surface. Same exact thing as before. So let's get this mixed in. We'll give it about 30 seconds or so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the temperature and make sure it's still at 90 degrees. If it's not, we'll heat it up a little bit. All right, so that should be about good. Grab my quick read here and just check the temperature. So we're at about uh, 87 degrees. That's close enough for me. I'm going to put the lid back on, cover it up in towels, and we'll be back in about an hour. Okay, so once again, my handy dandy uh, smart device has told me that it's been an hour. So let's have a look and see what's going on here. So what we're looking for is just to see if the milk has started to solidify and it definitely has perfectly so we now have curd what we're going to do now is we're just going to slice it into about two inch blocks i'm going to go sideways with the knife you can also do this you can buy a uh, i'm not sure i can't remember the name of it but it's a it's a cheese cutter so you just put it in turn it and it'll cut all at once the knife works fine, doesn't take that long, so I'm gonna do it my way. So once we've got the curd cut up into approximately two inch chunks, uh, we're gonna let that sit for about five minutes and then we'll come back and we'll separate the curd from the whey. Okay, so we've been about five minutes or so. Let's have another look, see what it's looking like. We should start to see the uh, curd and whey starting to separate a bit. You can see it along the cut lines, which you couldn't see before. Now what we're gonna gently do is we're gonna, we're gonna stir the, the curd uh, very gently up and down just to start to, um, to start to separate the whey. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it for about five minutes, then I'm gonna stop for five minutes, and then I'm gonna do it again for five minutes, and that should give us uh, the, the curd to about what we want it. So let's give it five minutes, we'll see where we're at. Uh, the other thing is this will break the curd up into smaller parts. That's why we start with the big chunks to begin with. So as you can see, we've been at this uh, about two minutes now, I guess, um, and you can already see that the, uh, the whey is really starting to separate and the uh, curd is starting to uh, firm up. Uh, the reason to leave it the first time after cutting it is to actually let the, uh, the curd do that so that it's a little stronger when we go to uh, mix it like this. Another thing I should mention while we're just uh, stirring along here is that um, because you're dealing with bacteria, which is what the culture is, you wanna make sure that everything you have is really clean. And if you can use metal or glass, um, metal being the best, but um, you just, you wanna make sure that no other bacteria gets, gets into the mix or chances are the cheese isn't gonna work at all. That's been about five minutes. We're gonna let it sit for about five minutes. I think I'll take the spoon out of there actually. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention to you before I just started this is you do want to keep this at about 90 degrees. So if it starts to cool down, give it a little more heat. Just be really careful because it can scald very easily. Okay, the curd's been sitting about, or I should say the curds and whey actually, have been sitting about five minutes. We'll have another look, then we're going to give it another stir for another five minutes. So you can see now the whey has really separated from the curd. It's all liquid on top now, as you can see, for a little bit down. So again, the curd's gonna be a little stronger now, uh, but still be gentle. And we'll just give it light stir for another five minutes. So that's been about another uh, five minutes or so. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna let it rest with the lid on. Try to keep the temperature up. We'll put the claws back over it. We're gonna let it set for 10 minutes. Once we're done there, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, uncover it and I'll let you have a quick peek. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, go over to the sink and we're gonna strain out the, uh, the uh, whey. Um, again, as you take it out of the pot to put it into the strainer, um, be careful, treat it gently. Don't just dump it in um, because it will, it'll put too much weight in the curd and it'll get really hard. So you want this to just slowly drain. Don't drain it too much. We need to drain it for about 15 minutes or so. Uh, and then we'll come back after it's been drained and we'll go through the next steps. So let's go over to the sink and we'll get it drained. Okay, so just before we go over to the sink, let's have a quick look. So you can see the uh, whey separated from the uh, curd. As you can see, it has separated a lot, which is exactly what we want. 
So you can see there's a ton of, of the whey on top now. So let's go over to the sink and we'll start to drain it. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Just before I go get the, uh, the curd, I, I forgot to mention one other thing. If you prefer that your, your cheddar or your curd in this case is an orange color, you, uh, all you need to do is add a few drops of veneto and that'll change it to that kind of orange cheddar color that you're used to seeing. Doesn't change the flavor, doesn't do anything, it just makes it orange. Uh, so I didn't bother today. Um, but anyway, that's, that's how you make it orange. The uh, curd and whey have been sitting in the, the uh, colander now for about 15 minutes so you can see that now there's virtually no way uh, a little bit left but that's okay you want to have it not too dry when you flip it out onto the board so we're going to flip it out now and then uh, we're just going to check yeah we should be pretty good i think so this is going to be a little messy little wet actually i think at this point i'll just slip this under here just to stop from being too much of a mess no, that made me just a little more sense. So we're going to just flip this over and we should end up with a nice little block of curd. Like this. Don't worry too much about damaging it a little bit. We can just squish that back in as the process goes on. We're just going to get the pieces in here a bit. Kind of get it out so it's about the same thickness. And then we're just going to cut it in half. And we're going to put one half on top of the other half, like this. And then we're going to get a fresh piece of cheesecloth, new, washed, make sure it's clean. And we're going to rewrap it. And this time we're going to wrap it right up. And make sure you get all bits in there. There we go. So we'll wrap it right up, nice and tight. And we'll put that on a wire rack like this get rid of this and then well no we're not going to do a workout I have a three pound weight here I've done it with five pounds um, and I find the five pounds a little bit heavy it'll it squishes the, the curd down just a little too much and it gets hard so I'm gonna try a three pound this time and we'll see how that goes so we're gonna put this on like this It can get a little tricky to get everything to balance, but don't panic. And then we're gonna leave this for a half an hour. We'll be back and then uh, we're going to redress it. So we're gonna take all the cheesecloth off, rinse out the cheesecloth, put it all back together, flip it over, and then do this again for another half hour. So we'll show you what we're doing in about 30 minutes. Okay, so we've been a half an hour and now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take the cheesecloth off, then um, Rinse the cheesecloth, and once we've done that, then we're just gonna rewrap it again, and then uh, we'll put it back on here, flip the other way. So in the meantime, just let me get this rinsed off here. You can see that, that already it's a much firmer texture. Now I rinse the cheesecloth as well. Uh, you don't really have to. I just find that it keeps the cheesecloth from plugging up a little bit. Um, but just make sure to wring it out really well. That's the big, big thing here is to keep it wrung out so that it, uh, more moisture than come out of the curd. So, wrap her back up. And it looks like we're getting a fair amount of liquid, so I think we'll just get rid of this first. So we're all wrapped up again. So we'll just put the uh, board back on top, weight back on top, and we'll see you in a half an hour. So we've been another half hour. There's not really a lot to say here. Just rinse and repeat basically. So we'll take it off, rinse out the cheesecloth, flip it over, put the cheesecloth, you get the gist anyway. So we'll go ahead and do this. And then uh, in another half hour, we'll do the same thing again. So once again, we'll see you in about a half an hour. The other thing I should point out to you, if you've never made cheese before, there are several companies online that you can buy a kit from that'll include most of the things you need to make a uh, either a small brick of cheddar, normally curd, 
um, and then they sell other kits that can make different kinds of, of cheeses as well. Um, I'm not going to name any names here because we, you know, there's no sponsorship or anything. Suffice it to say, we've tried a couple of them and uh, they've worked really well. Since then, we've moved on and we just buy the supplies that we require for whatever we're making at the time. So, but there are lots online. Just look up cheese making kit, and I'm sure you'll find one that'll work for you. So, let's go ahead and get this done. It's been another half an hour now. There's not really a heck of a lot more to say. We're just going to rinse and repeat. So rinse out the uh, cheesecloth, give it a ring, flip it over and uh, stack it back up again. So let me get that done. Okay, so there we go. That's all there is to it. We'll see you in half an hour. Okay, so that's it. 30 minutes has gone by. We've now had a total of two hours of pressing the cheese. So I think, um, I think we should be good to go. So let's give her a little unwrap. We'll just check it out, make sure. I doubt we're going to have an issue. And there you have it, a block of curd. I know, it's a little weird, right? So at this point, you can do one of two things. One, you can tear it up by hand into just random pieces, or like me, use a knife and cut it up into more uniform pieces. So I normally do, I don't know, maybe about three eighths to a half an inch. I find that they're, they're about a good size. Make sure you have a really sharp knife for this. Well, I'm only kidding, but do make sure it's a really clean knife. Now I find the blocks a little thick too, so uh, when I'm done, I'm just going to take all these and cut them in half. As you can see, the two blocks have really become one and uh, there's no, no uh, gap in between anymore, so we can cut it up no problem. The other thing is they are a little long, so cut them down to some little better lengths too. And there you have it. So I'll just toss in, this into a bowl. We're going, to, um, we're going to toss this in about two teaspoons of salt. I'm going to cut back a little bit on it. Um, if you like a saltier curd, then what you're going to do is you're going to add two teaspoons now, mix it all up, leave it 10 minutes, and then add some more salt to your liking. Um, I'm going to cut back a little bit here, and we can always add a little bit more um, in 10 minutes or so. So put in one. Just give that a little toss. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll add about another half a teaspoon or so, and uh, we'll leave it at that for now. All right, so there we go. We'll leave that about 10 minutes or so. We'll, we'll taste it to check the salt and uh, we should be done. Okay, so here we go. Lovely, lovely looking curd. Now you may ask, what should we do with this curd? Well, you could just eat it or you could stay tuned and in a couple of videos from now or sometime soon, we'll show you exactly what to do with it and there's not a better recipe. So let's give this a try, see how it tastes. It's perfect consistency. It is quite good. Now, I've seen both leave the curd or eat it right away. I've done both. I think you're better to leave it for like three or four hours. Not all night, just three or four hours is enough, but it just needs a little time for the salt to get into it, for, for the uh, culture to kind of flavor the cheese a little bit better, um, and then you're good to go. Use it for whatever you want not a hard recipe it does take a lot of time we've been most of the day here um, but there's only three or four minutes work at each step and then you just let it sit so virtually the same as the the uh, cheddar cheese video we did the only difference is that you don't press it as long so remember if you like this video hit the like button share it with all your buddies and hit the notification bell so you're notified each time that we put out a new video we try to put out a video every week and remember we always put the recipe down below so if you miss it during the video don't worry about it just look down below and it'll tell you all the ingredients that you require so remember first we cook then we eat can't beat curd mm -mm -mm, that's good